At Farms.com Risk Management, we understand that commodity price risk management and sound financial advice are essential in today's volatile crop and swine sectors. Visit our website at www.riskmanagement.farms.com. Welcome to the Farms.com Daily Market Commentary for November 17th, 2011. This is Michelle Lemmerant, Commodity Research Analyst for Farms.com Risk Management. Today we're reviewing the latest USDA weekly U.S. grain export numbers reported November 17th for the week ending November 10th. U.S. soybean net export sales were reported at 746,143 metric tons for the 10-11 marketing year and 5,100 metric tons for the 12-13 marketing year. This was above expectations of 475,000 to 700,000 metric tons. 2011-2012 net sales were up 23.5% from last week and up significantly from the prior four-week average. U.S. export sales to date are down 32.9% versus the same period last year. Large soybean sales to China were widely expected as the USDA confirmed a private sale of 420,000 metric tons of U.S. soybeans to China for the 11-12 marketing year. The rumor earlier in the week was that China bought five to six cargoes, which now looks like it was closer to nine cargoes of U.S. soybeans. Chinese purchases of soybeans should limit the downside below $12 a bushel, but with stops below $12 a bushel, we would not be surprised to see a retest of the lows on October 4th at $11.63 per bushel, as you can see in the January 2012 Soybean Daily Futures chart attached. The weakness in corn futures will weigh on soybean futures despite the good news on exports this morning. U.S. sweet net export sales for the week were, were reported at 317,060 metric tons for the 11-12 marketing year and 17,500 metric tons for the 12-13 marketing year. This was below expectations of 325 to 475,000 metric tons. Net sales for the 11-12 marketing year were up 6.2% from last week, but down 5% from the prior four-week average. U.S. wheat export sales to date are down 5.3% versus the same period last year, as you can see indicated in the teal line on the chart attached. Australian wheat with lower prices due to a record crop and a large black sea supplies continued to push the U.S. out of the optional origin market. Russia exported a record 3.2 million metric tons of wheat in September and could ship up to 17 million metric tons of the grain by the end of December. The Ukraine and Kazakhstan are also offering wheat at discounted prices due to large supplies. The poor export sales report, coupled with negative outside markets, for instance the higher U.S. dollar as you can see in the chart, are putting pressure on prices today. U.S. corn net export sales for the week were, were reported at 208,948 metric tons for the 11-12 marketing year, below expectations of 300 to 600,000 metric tons. Net sales for the 11-12 marketing year were down 17% from last week and down significantly from the prior four-week average. U.S. corn export sales to date are down 18.7% versus the same period last year, as you can see indicated in the chart in front. Export sales overall were disappointing once again this morning. A big cancellation of 426,000 metric tons of U.S. corn by unknown destinations largely offset actual sales, which were quite good. The big cancellation of U.S. corn sales this week added more fuel to the fire as the market is already worried about Japan, which is traditionally the largest buyer of U.S. corn. However, they did buy corn from the Ukraine instead of the U.S. this week. Japanese U.S. corn imports could fall by as much as 1 to 2 million metric tons in 2012. So bottom line, this is negative news for grain producers near term. There's no need to panic as there is an overreaction today with corn export usage representing only 13% of total 2011 production versus ethanol usage at 40.6%. This is however more good news for the livestock producer. We're reiterating our new 2012 soybean meal recommendation that we made on November 15th to book 100% of your soybean meal needs out to the end of the third quarter of 2012. We will look to booking more corn bushels forward as well in the coming days as we look to the closing price for clues as to whether the 2011 December corn futures will test the $6 support level and this is most likely a done deal. In other news, new U.S. claims for unemployment benefits dropped to 388,000 last week, a seven-month low and lower than expectations of 395,000.
The figures suggest that the labor market is continuing its gradual improvement, but not fast enough to lower the current 9% unemployment rate and promote faster economic growth. The USDA reported the private sale of 420,000 metric tons of U.S. soybeans to China for the 11-12 marketing year this morning. According to a senior climatologist with Environment Canada, the country should expect a colder than normal winter, but Warren said there's a new norm, expect the unexpected. Although admitting the forecast is getting more and more difficult, the, clim the climatologist said that the long-term models showed that most of the country will experience a colder than normal winter due to La Nina. Weather forecasters in the U.S. are saying that La Nina conditions in the Pacific Basin strengthened over the past month and are expected to peak near the end of the year and last until into 2012. Elwin Taylor, an Iowa State climatologist, says that a slow strengthening of La Nina-like air pressure has continued and says that a full resurgence is, is likely in 2012. French grain analyst Strategy Grains issued an estimate for total European Union grain production at 284 million metric tons versus the previous estimate of 282.2 million metric tons. They raised their European Union corn production estimate to 64.4 million metric tons, up 1 million metric ton from their last estimate, and up 16% from last year. Winter canola plantings in 2012 were pegged at 11.5 million hectares, down 3% from the prior crop year due to poor soil and weather conditions. The EIA reported last week's ethanol production at 916,000 barrels per day, up 5,000 barrels per day from the previous week. Ethanol stocks were reported at 17.1 million barrels versus 16.4 the week before. Brazil's largest soybean producing state, the Mato Grosso, is now 86% planted versus 71% last year at this time. Analysts expect a 6% expansion in soybean acreage in the region. The looming end of the CWB may lead to increased barley exports for Canada. According to Canadian industry participants, the change could lead to an increase in feed barley exports by a million tons or more as grain companies will be able to respond much quicker and offer price signals to a grower if they have the opportunity for an offshore market. Should demand increase, producers will likely reverse the trend of planting fewer and fewer barley acres, as has been the trend in the past 20 years. Canada currently exports a combined 2 million metric tons of feed barley and malting barley per year, but this figure is anticipated to rise by to at least 3 million metric tons upon the removal of the CWB. There are reports that packers have reduced their demand for hogs short term, as they are having problems moving adequate volumes of pork in the domestic market. The pork carcass cutout volume gained $0.08 cents per carcass yesterday to finish at $88.75 per carcass, as you can see in the chart attached. And lastly, meat analyst expects Friday's USDA cattle on feed report to show the following. November 1st on feed at 104%, October placements at 99%, and October marketings at 101%. The report will be released at 2 p.m. Central Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, tomorrow afternoon. That's all for today. Have a nice day.